Hi, Edelistas. This is your math instruction for the week. Um, and uh, congratulations. You're officially learning sixth grade math. So that's pretty cool. We did finish our uh, fifth grade curriculum already. And I looked at the sixth grade curriculum. And usually the first like 10 lessons are repeat, are like repeated information from fifth grade. So I thought, you know what, if it's repeating fifth grade, might as well start in and get some repetition, right? Okay, so we are gonna do lessons one through four this week, um, and it's all review, okay? This is stuff you already know how to do, and you're gonna be like, hmm, actually, Miss Sunsaker, this is pretty easy. So first, lesson one, we are going to learn about um, adding and subtracting money and whole numbers, okay? So we're going to add and subtract money and whole numbers, okay? So I'm going to give you an example from the instructions and reminder sheet read that Edelistas. it is so important that you read the instructions and reminders page if you don't this might be hard okay so you need to read those pages um this is example number two example number two from your instructions okay and it is one dollar 25 cents plus one plus twelve dollars and fifty cents plus five dollars okay what does that equal so I am going to set this up in a different way I'm going to set it up um, this is horizontally I'm going to set it up vertically okay so when I add decimals Adding, remember this, we struggle with this. Adding decimals, line it up. Line up the decimals when you add, okay? So when adding, decimals, line them up and Fill zero, fill with zeros, okay? Zeros, okay? I will show you what I mean by this, okay? So I'm gonna take, um, now, community of property, you can change things around and it doesn't matter the order, right? So if I put $12.50 at the top, it's okay because addition is commutative. You can commute them, you can move them in different orders and you get the same answer. So I'm gonna put $12.50 at the top. Then I'm going to add $1.25. Then I'm gonna add $5, okay, wait. Where am I gonna put this five? This five is in what place value? The ones place. What place is the ones place here? I've got my decimal here, therefore this two, this one, those are the ones place. So you have to line up the five in the ones place. Therefore my five goes right there, okay? Now that looks kind of awkward, right? It's right in the middle. Well, it says line up the decimals and fill with zeros. So what do I have to do here? I have to fill with zeros and then I can add them, okay? Zero plus five plus zero is five. 
5 plus 2 plus 0 is 7. I'm going to bring my decimal straight down. I'm going to have um, 2 plus 1 plus 5 is 8. 5, 6, 7, 8, and 1. And then I'm going to finish it by adding a number sign because that is the... Um, we're looking for money, we gotta label it, right? So, if we look at our lesson number one, example number two, our answer should be the same as in our instructions, which is $18.75, okay? Um, now, I'm going to do example number four. Make sure you're following along. Example number four, I'm going to put it right here. Okay, I've got, hmm, where is it? Oh, five dollars minus, let me just double check here, five dollars minus Oh, it says Jim spent $1.25 on a hamburger. He paid with it for a $5 bill. Find how much change he should get back by subtracting $1.25 from $5. So I've got $5 minus $1.25. That's It tells me to set it up like that, okay? Now, just like when I'm adding decimals, when I'm subtracting decimals, I need to line them up and fill with zeros, okay? So, find the ones place. This is the ones place, this five is in the ones place, okay? Now, subtraction is not commutative. You cannot switch the numbers around to get the same answer. Five is listed first, so five goes on top. I'm gonna do it right here. 5 point, because that's my ones place, then I'm going to put my one right below it. And now I have to fill with zeros, okay? So there, this is what I got so far. When I am subtracting, so if you don't do this, you're gonna get it wrong, okay? Because if you don't have those zeros there, you're just going to put your 2, your 5, and then you're going to get $4.25. That doesn't make sense, okay? Um, add your zeros, all right? I cannot, if I have zero things, if I have no, nothing, zero things, can I take five things away? No, okay? So I got to go to the next place value that I can borrow from. Can I borrow from zero? No. So I got to go to the next one. Can I borrow from five? Yes. I'm going to take my five, make it a four, okay? Now, this becomes a 10, but I still need to borrow from it. So I'm borrowing from the 10 now, borrow from it, make it a nine, and now that is a 10, okay? Now, if I have 10 items, I can take five away and I get five. If I have nine items and I take two away, I can do that, and I get seven. If I have four items and I take one away, I get three and I bring my decimal straight down. So if I am buying a hamburger and it is one, I have five dollars and I spend one dollar and twenty-five cents, I should get back three dollars and seventy-five cents. Okay? That's for lesson number one. Lesson number two, multiplying and dividing. Okay? Multiplying and dividing whole numbers, money and whole numbers, okay? So lesson number two. Multiplying and dividing money and whole numbers. Okay, I'm gonna draw a line here so that we know now we're on lesson number two.
okay? Um, you are going to, we're going to do um, example number, which one is it? Example number, let's see here. Make sure you read your new concept, okay? Um, example number two, again. Nope, example, what are we doing? What did I say to do? Oh, this is from the new concept. Okay, so at the very last part of the new concept, it says, um, when multiplying dollars and cents by a whole number, the answer will have a dollar sign and the decimal point with two places after the decimal point. So I've got, for example, $1.35. And I want to multiply it by six. Okay? Now, when we are multiplying decimals and whole numbers, this rule does not apply. You do not need to line them up and fill them with zeros, okay? We have gone over this before. We've done it multiple times. When you're adding and subtracting, line up the decimals. When you're multiplying and dividing, don't, okay? Don't worry about it. We add the zeros, or we add the decimal at the end, okay? So, just like... Um, with conversions last week, how I said to ignore the decimal, ignore the decimal right now, okay? I'm just gonna multiply it like there's no decimal. Six times five is 30. I put down my zero, I carry my three. Six times three is 18, plus three is 21. Put down my one, carry my two. 6 times 1 is 6, plus 2 is, sorry, I got distracted. 6 times 1 is 6, plus 2 is 8. Put down my 8. Now, I need to count the number of des the number of place values that are behind the zero. So I go to my number with my decimal in it, and there are 1, 2 places after it. Two places, okay? Now I'm going to go to the end of my answer and I'm going to go in two places. So at the end of my number I go one, two, that is where my decimal goes. So one dollar and thirty-five cents times six is eight dollars and 10 cents, okay? That's how you multiply money and whole numbers together. So how do I, oh, real quick, all the different ways that multiplication can look, okay? If you see multiplication, so if you see, if you're reading something and you see this, that's just three times five, okay? If you're reading a problem and it looks like this, that's just three times five, okay? If you're reading something and it looks like this, everybody say it with me. This is three times five, okay? Same with this, three, three times five, okay? If you see a variable, I believe it's called. So if you see three with a letter right next to it, it means three times whatever this, and then you have to find that, okay? So this is, again, multiplication. The, all the different forms and faces of multiplication here, okay? This is all These mean to multiply. These mean multiply. Okay? Now, um, oh, 
dividing with money. Okay? I'm going to take three dollars and sixty cents. And I'm gonna divide it by four. So I've got three dollars and sixty cents. I want to give it to four different people in the class. How much money is each person gonna get? Okay? Well, I can either do this at the beginning of the lesson or I can do it at the end of the lesson, okay? I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do it right now. Bring up your money sign. Bring up your decimal. Just bring them straight up, keep them in the same position, shoot them up, okay? Now I'm going to divide like this decimal is not there. I'm gonna pretend it's gone, okay? Three or four cannot go into three, but four can go into 36. How many times, okay? Um, nine, I believe. Nine times four is 36. Subtract, six minus six is zero. Three minus three is zero. I'm not done. Just because I have two zeros here does not mean that I am finished with my division problem because I still have a number in my uh, original left in my original number. So I have to bring the zero down. I have to do that. Okay. Now four goes into zero. How many times? Zero. I have to do that. Okay. Nine and 90. That's a big difference. All right. Um, zero goes into four or zero times four is zero. Zero minus zero is zero. I have nothing left to bring down. I have no remainders. So how much is each person going to get if I'm splitting it up? They're each going to get 90 cents. All right. Okay. I'm going to stop this video right now um, and do lessons three and four in a separate video because it's getting lengthy and I'm pretty sure it's going to take a long time to upload. So I hope you guys didn't find that too hard. Again, you've all done this before. It all should be review. Um, but still, text me, email me, call me if you have any questions, okay? Okay, bye.